it does raise antipodies in some people. And of course, that's the whole point of writing the paper. If, if no one ever objects to anything you ever write, you might as well not have written it in the first place. You've not uh, made any advance. So, um, uh, but at the moment, I would say the public mood and the mood amongst many public health people and scientists is it is time for a different kind of debate, a more open debate. What happened that this, when you look at the international political class, this like snapped their spine, to be blunt. <laughs> there was total collapse of rationality and clear thinking and how do we think about harm reduction? How do we think about risk? How do we present the public with their risks? I was there at the beginning of the HIV pandemic. I was just starting my public health training. And I remember all the discussions. Can I go for my haircut? Can I shake, shake someone's hand? Can I be in the same room as someone? People didn't know how it was caused, how it was transmitted. So the kind of things I'm hearing now are the kind of things I heard when I worked on the AIDS, HIV pandemic as well. So uh, these, this new pandemic is not on the same scale, um, but it comes at a time, it's taken us unawares. Uh, we haven't been strong internationally. If we had been stronger internationally, we may have had a, a better international response. But uh, I'm not blaming anyone for that. Uh, WHO has been undermined for about 30, 40 years in many ways. And the United Nations agencies have been undermined in many ways uh, over that period of time. We've gone away from this approach of doing things internationally. And um, I think, I think there's been a huge amount of guilt amongst governments because the time to act was January. And most governments didn't act in January. They acted in March. My chess club closed down on the 8th of March. The country closed down on the 23rd of March. Our, the president of our chess club, who is not a doctor, he seemed to be more aware of what was going on than our leaders. He closed the, our chess club down on the 8th of March. Um, two weeks before the country um, imposed its lockdown. So we were late in acting, and I think there is a huge amount of guilt. Obviously, some mistakes have been made. Uh, the, I mentioned the care homes. But somehow or other, we didn't think about protecting our very elderly and who are living in these care homes, and a lot of deaths have occurred there. I think there is a lot of guilt around and that combined with a risk averse society. Um, I'm, a greatest, I'm the greatest proponent of being risk averse. For example, I don't smoke, I try and drink within the guidelines, alcohol. And uh, you know, I like to be a very good public health doctor and, and, a, and a champion of public health principles. I think um, we have become somewhat risk averse and um, and we maybe need to try and rebalance that. But the first thing that people have, the politicians and other leaders have to tell us is that we, we, cannot, we cannot get away from some risk. Some risk will have to be taken. And they have to steal us for that. And they have to instill some bravery in us, into our hearts. And um, that's not my job as a public health doctor. That's my... That's why we elect politicians to, to give us the facts, to steal us, to make us ready psychologically um, to, 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 to get through this, because that's what it's about, is about getting through this. Uh, in five years time, we might be able to look back on it and say, we got through it, we got through it as best as we could. Um, and uh, maybe it'll become endemic. It'll be a bit like flu. It'll be a seasonal flu for the, for the rest of our lives um, type of thing, with seasonal um, uh, COVID-19. Let's see. We don't know what's going to happen. But I think, I think our politicians do need to, through, through a steady series of messages, not a wavering series of messages, which is what I'm finding, that... People are wavering. One week it's one message, next week it's another message. And I have to say there has been a bit of a conflict between some politicians who want to 
be positive, um, balance up things, and then some public health people who tend to be very cautious. Um, and I think maybe everyone just needs to go back and look at the data uh, more carefully and say, let's just compare and contrast what's happening with COVID-19 in relation to what's happening with many other diseases and many other outcomes that are also important to us. Um, I have a broken tooth, but no dentist is willing to look at it. Uh, another friend has got an abscess. They've been treated with the abscess twice with antibiotics. It's still there. And um, a dentist is not willing to drill into it. My sister-in-law had very severe abdominal pains. They, they said, you need an endoscopy. We're, we're not going to do it. So um, I've already mentioned the people who are having heart attacks in the community, people with cancer, all sorts of other things are going on. People with loneliness, mental health problems. Let's just find I know. I know personally people who have had severe mental health crisis from the months and months of social isolation that have been imposed, even on situations where they would be perfectly safe to, to travel. And I know people who have had more severe infections than COVID-19 who, who were afraid to go to the hospital because of COVID-19. And then after getting out of the hospital for this horrible, most painful thing they've ever experienced diverticulitis in moment, right? They go, well, at least I didn't have COVID. And you're, you're, you want to say, I'm, I'm really happy you didn't have COVID too, but for your age group, you were actually more at risk. Your life was more at risk from the diverticulitis that you were considering not going to the hospital for. Well, it's, it's time for a new dialogue, a more open dialogue, more thoughtful dialogue than hitherto. We've been through the crisis now in most countries, certainly in the U Europe, we've been through the height of the crisis. That doesn't mean to say it won't come back. But if we're careful, it won't come back to the same level. And um, similarly, hopefully in the United States and other countries. What's going to happen in countries like India and uh, Brazil and Mexico and African countries, I think is fairly predictable. And I hope they will find the right strategies for their own places. It's a difficult times we live in, and we all have to acknowledge that. But while acknowledging that, let's try and keep a cool head. Raj, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the dialogue here. And I, I think that that open science that's about saving lives, not sacrificing them, that 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 the economy and public health are not enemies necessarily that act the economy has all of these public health vectors to it i, I think that you're right there's there's uh, an impoverished conversation that that just even taking the moralizing away and being able to have an open discussion about some of these things and what's the best messaging things of that nature very refreshing i, I much appreciate it thanks for being on thank you very much Grant. okay bye-bye for now